Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another project for you. Today we're going to be doing the covered bridge, the stone bridge right here. We're going to be doing a little project with that. So we're going to be using the small grasses from the foliage set. we we'll be using this, this little limb right here from the WC Series 6. Be using the birch trees from the Covered Bridge mini set. And I'm going to be using these little stones from the exclusive bunny and chair set that you can only get, you could only get in 2016 when you attend an art impressions class. There's a new set out for 2017. Um, these are exclusive to people who attend that. Okay, so let's get started. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to ink up the stone bridge and I want it to be like stone looking so I'm going to be using two colors I'm going to be using the African violet so first I'm going to use that and I'm going to ink that entire stamp up and I'm going to stamp it off on some scratch paper okay then I'm going to take the sepia and I'm going to go right over the top of that. This is going to create a really nice dark gray color, which just is really great for this project. Okay, so I've done that. Now I'm going to stamp it a little more towards the bottom of the page. Okay. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to pull the color out of the lines. So with this image here, it's the easiest way to do this so that you maintain all of these little brick shapes is I'm going to go across the top of this and then I'm going to come underneath and do the same thing. I'm going to go right along this line, sometimes coming up into that other brick just to give that a little bit of shape, really maintaining a a nice highlight in the middle. You don't have to worry about if some of them don't have a highlight and that's okay because these bricks aren't perfect and this is watercolor so we just want to give the idea of the bricks but we want to maintain some type of a highlight on most of them. And I'm going to bring the color just a little bit outside of the lines here. You see it gives a nice brownish gray color. This would be really dark in here behind this um, the archway. I really want that archway to pop. So I'm just bringing my brush underneath them, underneath the bricks, and then around these stones right here. I'm going to bring that color right out. And I want it to fade out into the background here. Just pull a little bit of that color. Gives it a little bit more dimension. Okay. Around these rocks. So I want to go underneath these rocks right here. I'll put a little more water on my brush. So go right underneath here. As you can see, I try to move my paper as I'm doing it. It just makes it easier. Feel free to move your paper all around too. And then just shading in the sides of these bricks. Now this area under here is going to be really dark. We're going to darken that up again too. And then we want to go outside of these little rocks here. And then shade those in, keeping the white space right on the top so it gives it some dimension. Like that. Okay. See that little bridge pops right out at you. And then we want to come up here and just give those rocks a little bit of color variation so they look like rocks a 
Right? Just softening the ends of those lines. All right. And that's our little so that's our bridge. Now we're going to we're going to add some foliage. We're going to add some some um I'm going to put some of those little rocks into the river that's going to go underneath this bridge. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do the little bricks in the river first. So I've put them on my my Stampin' Majig here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to f flip them upside down. So I want them to look like different rocks. I don't want to just stamp them all together. Then it won't look as natural. So I'm going to I'm going to try to vary them a little bit. Which ones I which ones I stamp and which ones I don't. The first one though, I think we're going to do the whole the whole bunch of them. So what I'm going to do is I think I want them I'm going to put them like right here. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to put them right about there. And I'm going to ink them up just the way I did the bridge. So I'm going to first do them in the sepia. This is going to give them a really nice look. It's going to make them look like they're stones. And I really want them to match the bridge. So stamp it off. And then take the sepia. And I'm going to ink that up again. I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to stamp that down right there. So now I have to decide where I want the other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clean this off really good with some water and a and a little cloth because I would I want to make I'm just going to ink up a couple of them. And I made up a little mask to cover this the bridge. I'm going to put some in here. So I can kind of use this to see what kind of, and I'm going to turn it upside down, I think. So I think, yeah, I'm just going to do these three right here. I don't want them to be too close together because I kind of want it to look like a rocky, um, up here in New England we have we have a lot of rocky little rivers and that's what it kind of reminded me of. So I wanted to try to m emulate that. So I'm going to do the African Violet. I'm going to stamp it off. Then I'm going to ink it up with the sepia. And because this is upside down, I'm actually going to do it upside down. So I'm going to put this just like you would normally and make sure my stamp is right. Move this out of the way and then I'm going to stamp right there. Okay. I think I just want to put one more right here. I think I might just use the same three. Those three little ones. Maybe I'll try to do these three because they're not. I'm just not. I'm gonna just take off this little baby one here and use those two. Okay. So again, the African violet. Stamp it off. And then the sepia. I think right there is good. All right. And then I'm just going to stamp it down. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the color out around them. Kind of the same thing that we do with the trees that we're going to do shortly. We want to paint the negative space so it really pulls these little stones out. So I'm going to 
and I really don't care if they blur because they're going to be they're going to be in water so I really want them not to have a really serious line around them so I'm okay if it blurs the lines a little bit but just pulling this one actually is going to look like it's under the water and then just pulling the color putting some on top to give the give the rock a little bit of dimension but really just pulling that color right out and I want to be careful to leave this open because I'm going to do something with that later just pulling this color right out adding some dimension on top Letting that just really come come out. I want this to look like a little New England river. And then I'm just gonna try to fade that out a little bit. We're going to put some water in here. And then just this last one right here. Just pull that color right out. A little bit into the center. Make them look like rocks, not dots, not stamps. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the water. So on my palette, I'm going to add some number 60 salvia blue. I want to start light and then get darker. I'm going to use the number 36 manganese blue. And then I'm going to use the number three blue, blue, or regular blue. It's not blue, blue, it's blue. <laughs> okay. So we're going to use the first, the lightest blue here, just so I can paint in where I want this water. So I want this water to be right here. And I'm going to go over some of these, being careful not to smudge them too much. I, I want them to have a little bit of color on top of them. So they look like they're maybe under the water a little bit. Okay, so just as we do water, we're going to do just brush line strokes. That gives the idea of the water moving. And I'm trying to leave some white space. It's not because the rocks are not allowing me to leave too much white space, which is fine. I can, as I darken it up, I'll leave more space with those other colors. Now I'm going to come in with this other blue and just go right on top, not over everything, but over a little bit of it. Just kind of fill in some areas here. So New England rivers are really dark. They're more of a brown. I didn't want to paint a brown river, so I'm kind of looking at it looks right now it looks like it's gonna be a tropical little stream here. But I think that dark blue will darken that that up nicely and make it not look so tropical. Make it look a little cooler. Now if I add just a little bit 
this blue here. This area here is going to be darkest. Maybe in between here is going to be dark. I really want it to appear that the light is hitting those rocks and I just want to get rid of that dark line right there and then as we come down it will get a little bit lighter And the bridge will give off some, a little bit of a shadow here. I'm not going to worry about that now. I can come back in and put that shadow in after this is dry. that for now. Let's see. See how we feel about it in a little while. If I need to darken any of these areas up, I'll come back in and darken them up. So let's move on. Let's move on to the foliage that's the foliage that's going to be in the back of this little covered bridge. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a post-it note and I'm going to cover my bridge because I don't want these trees to go over my bricks. I'm going to take my my birch trees. I'm going to ink the bottoms up with the sepia. I'm going to add the pine green to the top of these trees. This is going to be our leaves. I did this in the covered bridge tutorial that I did to show you how to create these birch trees with, with some leaves. So I'm just going to do the same technique here. So I'm going to stamp them right here and then I'm going to stamp them again next to it just to make them give them a little more dimension. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This little covered bridge is a great, if you want to take your image and make a sympathy card or a birthday card, it's very versatile. Like All of the images pretty much are versatile. I just love these as focal images on my cards. I've done this one also for a, a sympathy card for someone who lost their dog put a little rainbow a rainbow over it for the rainbow bridge it's it's a sweet it comes out to be a sweet little card for someone who lost their best friends okay take the mask off and now we're going to add some water to these trees and bring those to life so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the color out of in between these trees so that it makes the trunks pop out at you. Because birch trees are white so we don't want to color in between on top of them. We actually just want to do in between them to give the hint, the idea that these trees are in the background. Just like that. Very easy. We're going to use another stamp, the little leaf stamp, 
as well. Okay. And then I'm going to hit these little, just these little lines in here with some water, just to give them a little more character. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Pull these, pull this color right out. I don't want too much water. I don't want to get rid of the lines between on my trees. It was a little too much water for me. Just makes it look like a little forest. The birch trees. New Hampshire birch, the birch tree is the New Hampshire state tree. And I was so thrilled when Art Impressions came out with that stamp. Along with the covered bridges, I feel like it was, it, it was made for New Hampshire. And now I'm just going to just hit these these little leaves in the background. I love this technique. It's so fun to do. It's very relaxing. Make sure you're leaving white space in between so you don't lose your dimension. And you can see kind of some of those trunks in the middle. You can use it. You can use a pretty good amount of water on these. Just trying to give some shapes to this, like that. And then we'll do the same on the side too. And I'm really just randomly touching. There's <laughs> no rhyme or reason at all. Just randomly touching some areas to bring those a background to those trees okay our next step we're going to put some some foliage in here next to next to the bridge so I'm going to grab this little leaf stamp and I'm going to do the in pi with the pine green again. And I'm going to ink this little guy up. And I'm going to stamp him a few times. So I'll stamp him here. One, two, three. I'm going to get a couple of impressions. I'm probably not going to get five, which is okay. I want to go right in between those trees. Make it look like there's a little bush in here along this river. Right? And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just trying to give it a good amount of leaves. I think I'm going to go just a little bit higher on this one over here. Okay. You can always add more if you feel like you need some after you after you hit it with the water. So let's, I don't want to use too much water because I want to keep these leaves pretty pretty much looking like leaves because I want this to look like a bush. So I don't want to, I don't want it to be completely watered down. And then over here we'll do the same thing. Just touching these leaves with the water. Just a little bush. All right.
All right, so our next step is going to be to add the grasses. So I'm going to add the little grass to the background as well as in here. I'm going to put it right underneath this bridge and then right along I'm using the, the olive green for this for the grasses here. And go right into the water. Don't worry about not about being too careful not to be in the water. Grass grows in the water. And I'm just stamping it all around. And then I'll do the same on this other side where these rocks are. I'll kind of ground those bushes a little bit too. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to pull the color out of those grasses. Remember we use a brush stroke and pull up and out. And then you can pull some right underneath too. And then we'll do the same on this side. All right, so we have a little bit of green over here around our and then I think I just to finish it off I'm just going to add a little bit of sky to the background so this I want to make sure I have enough water on my brush. I don't want to see a lot of brush strokes. I just want to kind of have the idea of some clouds back here in between some of these branches. It doesn't have to be really dark, just the hint. What the, what the background is the blue in the background skies are so easy they're just so random and there's really just just go with go with the flow don't worry about it it's, it's an easy thing to do and that's it. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go in and be a little more picky. I'm going to use some of this African violet here. And I'm going to go in and darken up a couple of little areas here that I think I just want to be a little bit darker. Right here behind, behind the little archway. I just think it needs to be a little bit darker. behind these little rocks. 
And then under here, I'm going to add a little bit of, a little bit more darker, a little bit more darker. That's it. That's great. A little more darker. A little bit of African violet just to darken this up a little bit under here. Like I said, you're going to have a little bit of a shadow from the bridge itself. So definitely want to make sure those are dark. And then around some of these rocks, give a little shadow. Just gives them a little more dimension. sitting in the water. I like the variation in the water. I think it it just gives the water a little bit a little bit of character. And I almost forgot to put some of the leaves up in these trees. So I'm going to use the little leaves that look like hearts from the same set that can the birch trees come from. And I'm just going to add a few a few leaves in here, not a lot, just to give it a little more dimension. And the same over here. And I think I'm using the olive green, even though I used the pine, the pine tree color, which is fine. It's not going to make that big of a difference. Green is green. And then I'm just going to go in and soften that up. And do really quickly. It doesn't need to be perfect. I think the green actually the pine, the olive green gives it a little, I like the look that it gives. And that's it. So our final step, as always, is to sign and date. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I hope you join me again for the next video. Thanks and have a great day.